isomorphism. Two simple graph G1 and G2 are isomorphism if there exists a function between the vertex set from the graph G1 to G2 such that if any two vertices in a V1 set are adjacent then whatever the images we are getting of these vertices in a V2 then they must be adjacent. This is the meaning of the isomorphism. And if such function exists, then we will say that G1 is isomorphic to G2. And this is a symbol for the isomorphic representation. And if two simple graphs are not isomorphic, then it is called as a non-isomorphic graphs. In Lehman watch, we can say that two graphs are isomorphic if there exists a one-to-one -one corresponding between the vertices and also they preserve the adjacency relation. Means if we are mapping V1 with some element in a second set with a U1, whatever the adjacency relation V1 has, the same must followed by its image. If V1 has a two adjacent vertices, then definitely U1 must have a two adjacent vertices and if their degree is 3 and 2, so there must be a two adjacent vertices in such a way that once the degree is 3 and another degree is 2. So next we will learn how to check the graphs are isomorphism. So very first step is check the number of vertices are equal in both the graphs or not. Then check the number of edges are same or not. Then check the degree sequence of the graph is same or not. And if yes, then we will build the mapping and then we will verify by using the adjacency matrix based on the mapping. And if it is no, then we will clearly say that G1 is not isomorphic to G2. So what do you mean by degree sequence? It is a sequence of degree of vertices of the graph G but in a non-increasing order. So for example, we need to find the degree sequence for this graph. So let's do that. So what is the degree of a C vertex? That is a 2. Degree of D vertex is 5. Degree of F vertex is 1. Degree of E vertex is 1. And the degree of B vertex is 2. And degree of A vertex is 3. After finding the degree of each vertex, now arrange these degrees in a sequence but starting from the highest one. Means we need to write in a non-increasing order. So take the highest degree from this one. So highest degree is 5. So after highest degree it is 3, then 2, but 2 is occurring 2 times. So we need to mention both 1, 2, 2, then next is 1, 1. So there are 6 vertices in a graph, so definitely there will be a 6 entries in the degree sequence. So let's take this example. So in this case we need to check whether G1 graph is isomorphic to G2 or not. So first we will count the number of vertices in this case. So total number of vertices in a G1 graph is 3 and whereas in a G2 graph is 4. So the total count of vertices in the both the cases are not changed. So we cannot define 1, 1 on to map over here. So due to this we can say that G1 is not isomorphic to G2. Basically two graphs are isomorphism if and only if they are the same graphs but their representation is different. Means if we can say that G1 graph is isomorphic to G2 in that case, can you reconstruct G2 in form of G1? So in this case we cannot because in this case we have a 3 vertices whereas G2 has a 4 vertices. So we cannot convert G2 graph in form of G1. So clearly they are not the similar structure of each other. So therefore they are not isomorphism. Now let's answer that whether G3 is isomorphic to G4 or not. So first we will count the number of vertices. So total number of vertices in this case is 4 and in this case is also 4. So the total count of vertices in both the graphs are same. Now count the number of edges. So number of edges in a G3 graph is 4 whereas in the G4 graph is 5. In this case the count of edges are not same. So clearly G3 is not isomorphic to G4. Let's try to answer the next example whether these G5 and G6 are the isomorphism graph. So now count the number of vertices for the graph G5. So total number of vertices in a G5 are 5 and in G6 is also 5. So 5 vertices are there. Now total number of edges in this case. 
so that is six and total number of edges in a G6 graph again six so the count of vertices are same count of edges are same so next we will check the degree sequence so first we will evaluate the degree of G5 graph so degree of this vertex is three it is two four one two so now we will write the degree sequence for the graph G5 so first we will take the highest degree vertex that will be four after that 3, now 2 is occurring 2 times and then 1. Now find the degree sequence for the G6 graph. So degree of this vertex is 3, this vertex is 3, this vertex is 3 and this vertex is 3 and the degree of E vertex is 0. So now we will write the degree sequence for the G6 graph. So highest degree in this case is a 3 and that is occurring 4 times. And the vertex E has a degree 0. So now in this case degree sequence is not changed. It means we cannot map these vertices over here. Or we can say that we cannot get the graph G5 from the G6. So clearly G5 is not isomorphic to G6 because their degree sequence is not the same. Now the next question is show that these two graphs are isomorphic. So for that, the very first step is count the number of vertices in both the graphs. So in the graph G, 4 vertices are there and in the graph H, 4. Total number of edges in a graph G is 4 and total number of edges in a graph H is again 4. One is from P to Q, then R to S, another is P to S and the last is R to Q. So next we will calculate the degree sequence. For the degree sequence, calculate the degree of each vertex. After calculating the degrees of each vertex in a graph G and H, we will write the degree sequence for both the graphs. So the degree sequence for the graph G is 2, 2, 2 and 2 and for the H is 2, 2, 2 and 2. So the degree sequence for both the graphs are same, even the number of edges and the vertices count is also same. So after getting each and every quantity as the same in this case, we will move to the mapping. So we will try to map the vertices from this graph to graph H. So now we will try to build the mapping over these two graphs. So for that we will pick one vertex from the graph G. Suppose we are picking the vertex A. Now the degree of this vertex is 2. There are two adjacent vertices with the A vertex that is D and B and whose degree is also 2. Now we will identify a vertex from the graph H whose degree is 2 and their adjacency vertices degree is also 2. So let's try to pick the R. So degree of R vertex is 2 and their adjacent vertices degree is also 2. It means we can map a vertex A with R. Now you can check it. The degree of vertex A and R is same. So there are two adjacent vertices in both the cases. Even their degrees are same. So it means we can map A with R. So very first thing we are defining a mapping of A vertex with the R. Now we need to pick any one vertex from this adjacency vertices of our A. So let's pick a vertex B. So degree of a vertex B is 2. And it has a two adjacent vertices A and C and whose degree are 2 and 2 respectively. Now we need to map a vertex B with any one vertex over here. Make sure the degrees are same. So degree of a B vertex is 2. So degree of Q vertex is 2. Even the degree of S vertex is 2. So we can take any one vertex from here. So suppose you are taking a vertex S. Now S is adjacent with r and p whose degrees are 2 and 2 respectively now you can check it if you are going to map a vertex b with s then they both have same number of adjacent vertices even their degrees are same so it means we can finalize the mapping for the vertex b with s so let's finalize this one so b vertex is mapped with s till now a is mapped with r B is mapped with S. Next we will pick the vertex C. So C, the degree of a C vertex is 2 and it has a two adjacent vertices. One is D, another is B. And the degree of these two vertices again 2. 
Now we need to map a vertex C with one of the vertices in a graph H in which R and S is already reserved. We have only two options. One is P and another is a Q. And the degree of both the vertices are same. Suppose you are taking a Q vertex. So Q vertex is adjacent with P and R and the degree of these two vertices is same to the degree of these two vertices. So it means we can try to map C vertex with the Q. Before mapping also recheck, in this case B is already mapped with S. So when you are trying to map C with Q, make sure if you are taking a V over here, then there must be an existence of S in this case. So if S is not there, A means we cannot map C with Q. It means we have made the wrong selection over here for the mapping of the vertex C. Even from the previous case, you can easily observe if B is mapped with S and here A is mapped with R. So we have only one thing left that is a C vertex that should be a map with the vertex P. So you will get an idea during the mapping over here. So we can rather than taking this step, so we will map C with P. Adjacency vertex for the P are Q and S and whose degrees are 2 and 2 respectively. Even the degree for the vertex P is 2. So now we can map C with P. Now you can check it. V vertex is over here and we have mapped V with S and S is also here. So it means we can map C with P. So C vertex is mapped with P. Now the last vertex is there. So D vertex. So it means D can map with Q because Q is unreserved over here. Even D is unreserved over here. So last vertex is mapped with Q. So this is how we are defining the mapping. Once the mapping is built, we will check whether this mapping is correct or not. For that, we will provide the verification in which we are going to build the adjacency matrix for the graph G and H with respect to the defined mapping. For the adjacency matrix of the graph G, first we will take the ordering of the vertices. Suppose we are taking the ordering of the vertices as A, B, C, D and the same order we will define row wise. So this implies the total order of this matrix is 4 cross 4. Now A is adjacent with B and D means these entries are 1 and the rest of the entries are 0. Now B is adjacent with C and A. So these two entries are 1 and the rest are 0. C is adjacent with D and B. So means these two entries are 1 and the rest of the entries are 0. D is adjacent with C and A. So these two entries are and the rest entries are 0. So this is the adjacency matrix for the graph G. Now we will find the adjacency matrix for the graph H but with respect to this ordering means with respect to the mapping. So A is mapped with R. So in place of A we will take R and in place of B we will take the vertex S. In place of C vertex we will take the P. And in place of D, we will take the vertex Q. So now we will find the adjacency matrix with respect to this order R, S, P and Q. So same we will mention over the row wise. So this implies that the order of this matrix is 4 cross 4 which is further is equal to the adjacency matrix order for the graph G. Now R is adjacent with S and Q. So these two entries are 1 and rest of the entries are 0. S is adjacent with R and P. So R and P and the rest of the entries are 0. P is adjacent with Q and S and the rest of the entries are 0. And Q is adjacent with P and R and the rest of the entries are 0. So this is the adjacency matrix for the graph edge under this mapping. Now check it whether the adjacency matrix of the graph G is equal to the adjacency matrix of the edge. You need to check each and every entry must be equal to the each and every entry for this graph G. If each and every matrix position is mapped, then it means we have built the correct mapping and therefore graph G is isomorphic to H. And that is the proof for this question.
Moreover, you can check it when we are saying that A is mapped with R and B is mapped with S. So there is an edge between A and B. So this edge is basically mapped with an edge between R and S. Next, B and C edge. So B is a mapped with S and C is mapped with B. So it means this edge B to C edge is mapped with P and S edge. C to D edge. C is mapped with P and D is mapped with Q. So means P to Q edge is mapped with the C D edge. And the last this edge A D edge is mapped with the R Q. So you can open this diagram in form of this with the help of colored edges. So after this you will get this type of diagram. So you are getting an H graph in form of G. So clearly they are the same graphs. So that's why we are saying the graph G is isomorphic to H. Although the geometry of the original H graph is slightly different from the graph G.